homesteading to prepping to common horse sense, we are College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Today, we're putting in a third sister. And we're planting any skips. So, if you look at my corn down through here, you'll see that it came up really, really well. I don't know how well you can see the three different, the six different rows. But now, everything over here, the beans came up really well. The greasy beans, the speckled greasies, and the white greasies, they came up good. They don't need any replacements. But, on this other side, right back here, see right there, and right here, the cranberry beans and the uh, white half runners didn't come up too good. So I need to go back and replace them. So what I've done, always keep back some beans from what you're planting. I've got my cranberry beans here and I've got my white half runners. Uh, the white half runners, you know, we thought we lost seed and Five or six of them have come up down through there. So I'll probably plant the rest of this in hopes I get 10 or 12 more to come up. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how we're going to plant these. Now this ground is wet. And I don't want to mess up and compact it. So I'm going to show you how we're going to plant these. Okay, here we are in where the, the white half runner should have been. Here's a white half runner that's up, okay, and you'll notice that there's none around my corn, no others. So all I'm going to do is because this didn't come up well, I'm going to drop two or three seeds in this area, okay, and then I'll go back to my handy stick. Just push them in just an inch or two. And lightly put some, let some dirt cover them. Now it's supposed to rain tomorrow. So maybe these will come right back up. My goal is to get as many as I can to come up because I'm trying to get my seed back from my heirloom white half runners that we've had for over 40 years and I've lost the seed so I've got to get down this row and get all these in I'll do the same thing for any places where the cranberry beans didn't come up okay I've got this many white half runners left took me about 30 minutes to go down through there, drop them, and press them in. It's a lot more labor intensive than using that little earthway planter. But everything's already there. The ground's good and moist. I'm hoping that uh, they will uh, germinate a little better this time. The ground wasn't too, too wet, and we had a, three or four dry days after I planted them, so they might have started and then failed. Uh, the other beans didn't have that problem. Just the white half runners and uh, the after going down through there the red cranberry beans haven't had that much of a problem either uh, I've got a few places to uh, to plant where I would call them skips but it just may be failed germination I doubt it was my planter skip because all you have to do is look down through there if you look down through right through there you'll see that the corn didn't skip and these beans are about the same size as the corn so in the in the greasy bean section but no skips hardly either so let's go ahead now and let's do the third sister it's time to put in that third sister now what are we going to use for the third sister well when you plant corn and by the way I don't know when this got to be called a sister method okay my family since I was eight years old which is basically as far back as I can remember planting in the garden. Uh, before that, you know, we just played around. But at eight, we were expected to get in the garden and work, learn what a morning glory was, and 
not cut the beans down. Okay? So, ever since I was eight years old, and I'm in my upper 50s now, so ever since I was eight years old, we've planted pumpkins and butternut squash in our garden, in our corn. And that's the only way we've planted it. I've never knew that you could plant a pumpkin somewhere other than in your corn. That's just the way we've done it ever since I was a kid. Now, we didn't call it the three sister method back then. It was just planting pumpkins. Okay? Just planting squash. So, I'm going to plant it and I'm going to show you a little reasoning behind planting it. Now, as you look at our corn garden, there's one, two, three, four, five, six rows. Six rows of corn. And uh, the first two rows over here are speckled greasy beans and then white greasy beans, then cranberry beans, and over here is uh, white half runners. And all of this is candy corn. Well, you can see that there aren't a lot of skips down through there. And there very seldom is if you've got fresh seed, uh, less than two years old, and you use that planter with the right plate in it. That skips very few. So what we're going to do, we're going to go down through there, but what you don't want to do, you don't want to plant your pumpkins on this row or on that row. The reason being, pumpkin is a huge, huge vine. And so is butternut squash, and so is... Uh, acorn squash and spaghetti squash. We're going to plant all of those today in the corn. So you don't want to plant them in this outer edge because they'll run and spill over into everywhere else in your in your uh, field. So I'm going to plant them more along the center. These four rows is where they're going to get planted. And uh, let's uh, go have a look and see where. Right there is a skip. You'll notice that there's not a corn plant. Looks like for about a foot, foot and a half. The same thing right there. There's not a corn plant. So what I'm going to do, this is at the very beginning of the garden. So the squash we're going to use for the year is going to be the spaghetti squash. We're going to use it all through the year. So I want to put it close to the edge of the garden uh, so that it's easier to harvest. So what you do I'm going to drop three four seeds right there. I'm going to push them in Get over there Make sure they've got some dirt over them. Some soft dirt. Okay, those are in. Now in my back pocket, I've got fertilizer. So I'll sprinkle a little fertilizer right there on that hill and move on to the next one. Well, this next row right behind me, right back over here, there's the same skip. So I'm close to the end of the row. So I'll come up here and I'll drop in some spaghetti squash. Again, about four seeds. Drop them. Push them in. Cover them up. A little fertilizer. I do the same thing for the pumpkins for the uh, acorn squash and for the uh, butternut squash. So 
we'll get on out through here and get these planted. in I planted acorn squash butternut squash uh, spaghetti squash and pumpkins now of those the pumpkin is the greatest vine it's going to spread the most so I tried to confine my pumpkins to the lower end and but I didn't make it up completely to the lower end I worked my way back hitting the skips so now there's pumpkins, butternut squash and spaghetti squash and acorn squash all down these rows. Now as I plow with my hand tiller, because I have to do it with a hand tiller because these rows are a lot closer together. Uh, the other night I went down these rows with the cultivators on my tractor because the corn's still not tall. When the corn gets about oh, 16 inches tall I can't do that anymore. So I'll have to get at it with the hand tiller, but that's all right. As I hand till, the pumpkins and the squash will just be getting up. And then after I've hand tilled two or three times, the pumpkins and the squash will be in the way and I won't be able to till anymore. And the corn will be what we call laid by. Now some weeds are going to grow up, but you know, that's what happens. Some weeds will grow up, but the corn, but the but the ground cover of the beans and the squash will keep down the weeds a lot. And I'll harvest the corn long before I harvest any of this squash. Now, what version of, squash, what version of pumpkin did I plant? I don't know. We save our own seed. What version of butternut? I don't know. We save our own seed. I don't know if it has a version. I know pumpkins have a lot of different versions. Uh, but we've been growing this pumpkin for a long, long, long time. And just replanting it every year so and it's a it's a nice old 10 or 12 pound pumpkin nice and round i guess it may be a jack-o-lantern or i don't know but it's a pretty pumpkin and it uh, bears well now if you like this kind of stuff this homestead and do-it-yourself kind of thing be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe we do this homestead and prepping stuff every week sometimes one sometimes five videos just depends on what's going on in the homestead and if you hit the little bell when you come to the channel, it'll notify you when we upload a video. We upload every Sunday. Now, with that being said, it's time for me to get on to the next thing.